Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who is so perfect that when, and listen to the explanation of ulama, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was so perfect that if, and the scholars tell us, some narrations of a sahabi or someone who you would say radiallahu an is someone who met Rasulullah once. Forget about talking about how perfect he is. If you met him once, I would say radiallahu ta'ala an. That's how perfect he was. When you came close to him, you became perfect. So why not bring him close to ourselves? Wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. You still ask yourself the question. So what does this all mean? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us twice in the Quran what this all meant. Why Allah, why Muhammad Rasulullah? He says to us twice, once in Surah Saf 61, juice number 28. He says, Huwa <laughs> Allah that we just said there is no other God, but He sent Al-Salaman Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He sent a messenger with guidance with how to dress, with how to be, how to act, how to talk, how to pray, how to not to pray, what to do. But then he also said one more component, not just be good, be nice, come to the masjid and forget about Allah when you leave. <laughs> so even when the halo controller is in your hand, even when you're doing your tax return, even when your wife is agitating or your spouse is yelling at you, <laughs> Allah sent the Rasul for that time too. Not just for spirituality, but also for the true system of living. <laughs> so that this system, the perfect system that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us, it will become dominant upon all other systems of living. <laughs> it's election time. They want your attention, right? So even if the mushrik said he has a better health care plan, Turn to Allah and say, Allah, what do you want from my help? What can I do good for my help? It's time for marriage, it's time to do, I know October 15th just passed, right? So we just got in that tax deadline, right? All my accounting friends were saying, we some you don't realize, we, we're up all night. Everyone has to get their checks and balances in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, we, when it's time, people are getting their attention, they're going to drop taxes, better health care, they're going to take care of the war overseas. Ask how much attention did you give to know Allah says, we listened to Obama's inaugural speech, right? We waited up, those of us on the West Coast, we waited up till like 1, 2 in the morning. How many of us know Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala on his inaugural speech? How many of us heard it? We asked ourselves, walau kariha mushrikun, even if the mushrikeen hate it, Islam will be complete. So why not the people who love it pick, pick that up? Pick up that message and say this is the deen. So we say as Abu Darda radiallahu ta'ala and narrates to us that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said whoever after Salat al-Fajr and Salat al-Maghrib mentions the words Hasbi Allahu la ilaha illahu Hasbi Allah Allah is sufficient for me There is no other ilah No one worthy of my love more than Allah عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلِتُ I place my trust on him وَهُوَ رَبُّ الْعَرْشِ الْعَظِيمِ That he is the love of the Arsh of Azim So ask yourself, khutbah hasn't begun But how much have you reflected on Allah? Because when you start something with purpose When you start something with function And you understand what I'm doing with this thing Juma khutbah, salah, hijab Islam in general When I realize what I'm doing with it First six minutes sound pretty useful. I think I could use this for the rest of the time. So I say unto you, as the Prophet ﷺ gave us the reminder to make dua, to raise our hands before Jum'ah khutbah starts, and we say, Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarakta ya dhan jalal wal ikram hayna wa adkhilna dar salam from last Friday to this Friday that is keeping our dua from being heard. Oh Allah, anything we looked at on a computer screen or on the street that is keeping our dua from being heard. Oh Allah, any words of disrespect that we utter to our parents, any oppression on our wives or children or our spouses 
is that would lead to our dua being not reaching the throne of Allah. Oh Allah, cleanse that from yes. us. Oh Allah, we pray that our old age is not overcome by ailments or sickness, and we pray that the effects of interest do not overcome us. I say unto you only because this is a new time in meeting. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. But you do not respond. You take it as a dua. You say, I see the purpose. My time is less, so I wish you could take something from what we talked about today. What we introduced was the khutbah translated. I could have come in alhamdulillah, and you would have felt like Jummah. But then when you walked out, Jummah would have gone away. So I'm asking you as one purpose of Jummah, as our deen, find out why we do things in our religion. Why do we pray? And if you could take three examples, then I will complete the introduction and give you a khutbah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought us Quran. So you say we pray salah so we can go to Jannah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that's just one part of salah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded us, inna salata danna anil fahsha. Salah, its function in this world is to make dancing with the stars difficult to watch. It's to make modern family a little bit uncomfortable when you hold the remote in your hand. <inaudible> when we pray correctly, ABC doesn't become easy to watch. It becomes, ah, what is this? They're teaching us everything Muhammad Rasulullah <inaudible> said not to do. The function of Salah was to distance those things. The function of Jum'ah was so that if you never attended a weekend course in your life, you could finish your PhD in Islam here. And hijab, its function wasn't putting a garment, a rag on my head, but hijab existed for the man and for the woman. Hijab was a state of mind, not a covering on the head. Hijab was something that once illuminated in the heart, then the person said, I must cover my body. But not let me put something on my head and let everything else hug my body. When you lose the purpose and the function, it doesn't mean anything. We point our fingers at sisters, but what about us? Because every year our pants get tighter and tighter. And the people who design our clothes, ask yourself, what is their preference? Males or females? The men who design your clothes, what's their preference? Guys or girls? Then you answer yourself. With this we realize the story of the people of Nuh alayhi salam. And you know, Nuh time, 950 years he gave Dawah, right? 950 years. And after 900 of these years, he came to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah 71, ayah 8 through 13. So when your wife says today what was khutbah about? Surah 71, 8 through 13. Then you can ask for life. After you say this, you realize Nuh came to Allah in a state compelled to complain. When did he complain? 900 years later. He said, Ya Rabbi, فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا He said, Allah, for 900 years, I told my people, فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا Say astaghfirullah. Whether you made a mistake, whether you transgressed, whether you looked at haram, ate haram, whether you listened to a song, you enjoyed it and said, wait, I just forgot about Allah. Astaghfirullah. <laughs> For 900 years the message was, say astaghfirullah. Ask Allah's forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us to forgive us. And in this, the purpose of our creation is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After he said, إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا Allah said, don't worry about istighfar in the hereafter. If you ask for my forgiveness in this world, you receive That if you ask for forgiveness here in this world, Allah will rain from the sky. He will rain down midrara. Midrara, I don't need to translate. I just need to point outside. Midrar is not one tear because it's allergy season. Midrar is when it pours uncontrollably. For the computer programmers here, you know your per diem contracts you keep getting, Allah said you, as long as you make a sifar, Allah will keep giving it to you. Physicians, Allah will keep giving you cases. Those who are working, Allah will give you over time. 
And if you're worried about if I keep saying Astaghfirullah, my ego will be affected. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, after you make istighfar, I will forgive you. I will bring down barakah and rizq on you. And if you're worried about your kids, if your kids see you raising your hands and crying in front of Allah, don't worry. Allah says, Allah says that your children he will give you increase. Your manpower, your businesses will increase. And the money that you presently have, don't worry. It's not a donation khutbah. Allah will give you more. And just by saying Astaghfirullah Allah will give you gardens and if you're worried about who's going to water the garden if you're worried about when Allah gives you your Ferrari who's going to maintain it Allah says bumper to bumper warranty I'll take care of you and he asked one question to his people Surah 71 through 13 he asked one question مَا لَكُمْ لَا تَرْجُونَ لِلَّهِ وَقَارًا Ish, مَا لَكُمْ What's wrong with you? لَا تَرْجُونَ لِلَّهِ وَقَارًا What's wrong? وَقَارًا translates out into Why don't you recognize Allah? In the colloquial northeastern New Jersey language, you best recognize Allah. What's up with you all? Y'all don't recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You think that you made a sin and Allah can't forgive it? What's wrong with you? So let us recognize Allah. Let us recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And before I sit, take one moment. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alayhi wa wa sallam said, when the believer, two narrations, both of them are sound, feel free to look it up, you'll find one in Bukhari. The Prophet Sallallahu said, when the believer raises his hands in front of Allah, the riwayah actually reads, when a slave says sorry to Allah, he says, Astaghfirullah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Fariha, Allah is delighted. Allah becomes happy. When you raise your hands and ask for your forgiveness, more happy than if someone lost their camel in the middle of the desert, and then out of nowhere, he finds his camel. Imagine the happiness if you were broke down in the New Jersey turnpike at 2 in the morning and there was no one there. And all of a sudden, you turn the key and the car turned on. Allah is more happy. Allah is more delighted to say, you need something? Let me fulfill it for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is delighted. I ask you, I implore you, our deen right now is in a bit of turmoil. We have Syria, we have Burma, we still have Bosnia, we have Philistine for the love of God, the only house we were supposed to take care of. Allah said, I'll take care of the Prophet's house and his house. We have one house. We have a lot going on. But all I ask you to do is make this little thought. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us. And he wants things to be better for us. And the second thing that I beg from you is if that book that sits on the shelf just like Juma, just like Khutbah, just like Hijab. If it has a purpose, let's find out what the purpose is. And I remember the first, I remember the first <coughs> revelation to mankind wasn't about Salah, wasn't about beer, wasn't about Hanafi Shafi. The first riwayah didn't even have to do with fasting or hajj. The first riwayah told us what? اِقْرَقْ بِسْمِ رَبِّكَ الَّذِي خَلَقُ Make this ikhfaq and read the book of Allah. All our problems will be solved. Between the sittings of the khutbah, the Prophet وسلم, is narrated to have said in a weaker narration that the sittings between the khutbah, the dua is not projected. You can squeeze in an astaghfirullah there. Blow through your seam, garble your client. Astaghfirullah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then make dua for whatever you need. I'll give you five extra seconds. Make dua. Ask Allah. And please, make dua. We are on the sidelines of the Hajj game that is going on right now. We're on the sidelines. Make dua for those who are playing the game right now. Pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses them and brings them home safely. <laughs>
it's time to make the donuts, right? So the baker spent all night getting the flour ready, getting uh, akka and all of this, you know, getting the creams and everything ready. And Imam Ahmed and Hamza saw him from afar, and he's baking, time to make the donuts. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Imam Ahmed and Hamza came to him and he said, Look, Allah says in the Quran, the story I just told you, فَقُلْتُ استغفروا ربكم إنه كان مطارا. He's like, New Hadith Salam said, If you make a sifar, you'll get whatever you want. You have to answer one question for me. What happens when you say astaghfirullah? He said, I get whatever I ask for in my dua. He said, No, no, tell me the truth. Is there anything that you've asked for that you have never received? The baker stopped it, brushed off the sugar off his apron and said, Yeah, to tell you the truth, there was this one thing I, I asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I've been asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but never mind, you wouldn't care. He goes, no, no, what is it? <sighs> he said, you know that guy, Ahmed ibn Hanbal? One time if I could meet him, one time if I could see his face, <coughs> My life would be complete. Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal saw the flashback of having his stuff, the Sheikh's stuff, thrown out into the street. Saw the flashback of what, what's going on. I'm a scholar of the deen. And he said to the man, Allah dragged me to your doorstep. Allah dragged me to your doorstep. So don't ever think Allah does not accept your dua. Make istighfar. And you'll end up like the Dunkin' Donuts guy. You'll get whatever you want. Inna Allah ya'murum bil admi wa al-ihsani wa ibtai bil qurba. If you're just scrolling in, take the last ayah that we close every Friday. Indeed, Allah has enjoined justice. Ihsan wa ibtai bil qurba. Be just. Spend and be aware that Allah can see you even He sees us now and He sees us when the remote is in our hand and He sees us when we're typing on Facebook Ihsan wa ita'i bil qurba When you go home and your kids say what was it about smile When your wife says how was your day smile wa ita'i bil qurba And that relative that you don't like to talk to anymore because he borrowed something from you Wa astaghfirullah Allah forgive me I forgive you وَيَنْهَا عَنِي الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَالْبَغْلِ Justice, ihsan, spending on your family members, right? Allah balances and says, do these three, but don't. وَيَنْهَا عَنِي الْفَحْشَاءِ Don't get close to dirtiness, perverseness. When the TV shows tell you what's halal and haram, and they shake side to side and they catch your attention and say, Allah said, to stay with you. وَالْمُنْكَرِ مُنْكَرِ is the line in the sand between haram and halal. Allah says, don't walk up to the line and say, well, how haram is it? Is it like this much haram? Don't do that. Leave it. If Allah says, leave it, leave it. One bug. And don't oppress. Don't oppress the people around you. Don't oppress your kids, your family. But there's one more. Don't oppress yourself. If some ranting, screaming person made sense today, maybe it's the Read the book of Allah. Don't oppress yourself. What a big Allah, Akbar. Wallahu ya'ala, Muhammad, Aslam. Akhim, Islam.